Hi, my name is Karen Burtonshaw. Welcome to our PK Smack Talk called Opt into Hemodynamics. Hemodynamic education is a particularly dry topic with educational resources for this topic and known scarcity. Edwards has partnered with clinicians to develop tools and resources and these tools are created to suit all learning styles as it's well recognized that we learn in different ways. Some of us learn best through auditory, some visually and others using kinesthetic with the most dominant style in Australia being kinesthetic. We tend to be a country of I'll do it myself and figure it out types that hardly ever read the manual. Edwards Life Science mission is to deliver vital physiological information that optimizes the decisions of clinicians around the world. Edwards does this by partnering with clinicians to promote excellence in patient care and improve patient outcomes. Edwards tools are created to allow self-directed learning and provide options for the user to enter at any point in their learning curve. In 2012, Edwards Life Science provided online education to over 50,000 clinicians. So how do we actually opt into hemodynamics? You can log into the Edwards website and follow the links to a particular product or you can go directly to our critical care education page using the provided link on the screen. There you will discover Edwards web-based educational packages and exciting new tools such as e-learnings, live simulations, clinical papers, PowerPoints and reference text. Plus there's links to the Edwards YouTube videos, animations and online webinars. Edwards e-learnings are a big part of our web-based training. The content can be self-paced and includes media in various forms. Access to the e-learnings helps healthcare professionals become well equipped with basic and advanced hemodynamic knowledge and can be used as a medium to reach individual goals. Edwards has partnered with Toronto General Hospital to develop an online perioperative patient simulation tool known as POP. This online patient simulation allows you to practice hemodynamic stabilization in both the surgical and ICU setting. It's an awesome experience where you can choose the scenario, treat the patient according to your clinical judgment and then see the patients respond to all the hemodynamic interventions you prescribe. If you haven't already played with this, I'd highly recommend you get onto it. The Edwards Critical Care Microsite is another option that you can use to choose to look at case study simulation. Here you will enter through the OR of the ICU, depending on your speciality. Once in, you will be walked through a case scenario. There are a number of videos and animations available on our Edwards YouTube site. The ecchi for You site is made up of short videos helping you understand the basic hemodynamic concepts. This second YouTube site contains a larger playlist that covers topics related to the OR, ICU, hemodynamic monitoring and data presented at the 2011 ESA conference. As we've called this talk Opt into Hemodynamics, let's do just that and have a closer look at the physiological implications of appropriate resuscitation video found on our YouTube channel. This video discusses how clinical evidence has shown that maintaining proper patient fluid administration during surgery can help minimize recovery time and improve outcomes long after the patient leaves the OR. Let's see some more. This graph helps describe the concept of an optimal resuscitation range as exceeding or falling short of this range may result in increased morbidity. The use of goal directed protocols using flow-based perimeters such as cardiac output, delivery of oxygen, or venous oximetry can ensure the adequacy of resuscitation. We know multiple organ systems can be affected by how well the patient is resuscitated. For example, the GI tract is greatly affected by over or under resuscitation. We know that when properly hydrated, gastrointestinal tissues are well perfused and will receive adequate oxygen ensuring good bowel function. However, when a patient is over resuscitated with fluid, the GI tract is at risk of being edematous. Swollen tissue puts stress on the suture line and can encourage potential asthmatic leaks. Under resuscitating patients run the risk of inadequate cardiac output or hypoperfusion. A hypoperfused bowel may encounter immotility and ileus formation. In addition, hypoperfusion raises the risk of tissue breakdown and leaks at the suture line. So how do you know if your patients are properly resuscitated? The kidneys are sensitive to under resuscitation and normal kidneys will cleanse the blood of impurities and encourage a healthy urine output. Hypoperfusion can lead to a decreased blood flow or hypovolemia indicated by a decreased urine output and increased concentration of urine, eventually leading to renal ischemia and acute kidney injury. Renal injury caused by under resuscitation can be temporary or permanent. If permanent, it will significantly compromise quality of life and cost of care and increase risk of complications. So again, I ask, how do we know the patient is properly resuscitated? Right heart pressures are poor indicators of the patient's fluid responsiveness. In fact, 50% of patients do not show an increase in stroke volume, leaving patients at risk of over or under resuscitation. Dynamic indicators such as stroke volume variation, delta changes in stroke volume with fluid challenges, or passive leg raising helps assure adequate fluid resuscitation, early assessment and appropriate intervention and better patient outcomes. 
To help understand these hemodynamic concepts, Edwards has provided various interactive tools that let you look closely at hemodynamic monitoring and the patient's response to therapy. These tools teach hemodynamic concepts through simulated case studies in both invasive and minimally invasive technologies. For tailor-made 3D simulation presentations, please come talk to one of our representatives. 2013 will see Edwards education webinars continue. You can register and access a timetable from our website. Live recordings will take approximately one hour and include a presentation from a highly published clinician. You will be able to interact and ask questions during these live recordings. And the webinars are recorded and saved on the Edwards YouTube website approximately three weeks following the live recordings. I invite you all to utilize Edwards educational programs and resources to help you achieve your CME points. Edwards are happy to provide certificates of completion for any sessions that you attend, whether you're participating or presenting. These can be added to your professional portfolio. And finally, do your own in Edwards Quick Guide. We are now in our second edition. Edwards has provided both hard and soft copy. Hard copies can be ordered through our website, or you can download a soft copy online, or download the Edwards app straight onto your iPhone or iPad. Edwards staff are committed to working closely with clinicians to develop high-quality hemodynamic workshops and symposiums. Please feel free to approach us to discuss your ideas in more detail. Thank you for listening to our PK Smack Talk, and I do hope you've enjoyed this short journey and it makes you want to opt into hemodynamics today. We encourage you to start your hemodynamic journey with Edwards. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.